let's talk birth and death chains. Uh, these are, you know, some of the kind of the most well-studied uh, Markov chains out there. Um, they come out of biology, in particular the study of um, population sizes of species, right? So this birth and death and the state of this chain, which lives on the natural numbers, represents um, the, the size of the population. Right? And so, you know, it can go up, it can go down, depending on your uh, transition probabilities, but sort of that's where the, the nomenclature comes from. And, you know, suppose you're given this description for the one-state transition probabilities, which is, you, know, you get these three numbers, Rx, Px, Qx, and they're all non-negative, and they sum to one. And so that spells out some kind of a distribution, uh, you know, with three outcomes. And, you know, here are essentially the outcomes. If you're at state uh, x, you can go to state x plus one with probability Px. You go from x plus one down to x, with probability qx plus one, and then you stay at state uh, x with probability uh, rx. And that's true for all states uh, in the natural uh, numbers. And so this is a very general sort of example. Um, the Ehrenfest urn is, is actually a special case of this um, to, to see how you kind of have to set a bunch of transitions to, to zero. So, you know, first of all, the Ehrenfest urn was a finite state space. Uh, Markov chain and so you kind of have to you know if you had four particles for example you would then just set p4 to zero so that you don't get a transition further and you would set maybe this one to zero and all the you know tie off the other states um, you know kind of off to themselves maybe set rx equals one for all uh, x greater than four right so that they're just all absorbing states and the only part that matters is this one and that would be, um, and you know, that would be a step towards making this into an uh, Ehrenfest uh, chain. Um, you would then have to also st set the R's to zero, right? Because in that model, there were no self transitions. You every step you had to move a particle, so there was always a change. You never stayed at one state. Um, and you know that then you're left with the the px and the qx, and you know you know what what they are, right? It's had to do with you know where you pick the particle from and you know you know what those probabilities are by now uh, this also generalizes the example 4.35 in, in Ross uh, there he has I think essentially this same model with slightly different notation I think he uses alpha instead of P and but but uh, in his case it's a finite state um, Markov chain so so for him there are M like finite states and here this is a more general thing you have an infinite state space so uh, i guess you know you're you we're going to compute uh you know stationary distributions and uh, you're given this beast so so how do you start right? what do you do um i mean there's a, a lot of ways right and you get better better at it over time but you know if you just kind of get it getting going and it's not entirely comfortable yet then you know I suggest maybe sticking with the global balance equations even though that's not the best route here not the fastest way to get the, the problem but you know if you just kind of start with the left hand side of that equation and you get one state for free like we discussed so I'm going to take zero as the, my start state I'm on this line here right at the beginning of it and I get the state zero for free so mu of zero is equal to one that's great and then you know the next question I ask what um, you know how do I transition uh, what are the possibilities for me to get to, to state zero well I can get from zero to zero and I can get from one to zero and that happens with probability r naught that's the first part right mu zero times r naught plus mu one times the probability of going from one to zero and that's q one and you know then you simplify there's you kind of have to recognize that one minus r has to equal uh, p0 and that's because over there the, there's no q transition on the on the initial state right so maybe that's something i should have mentioned q0 is is uh, zero uh, let me add that in that's important right because the, this thing is only defined on the uh the natural uh numbers so you know here you immediately have one uh, minus r naught is equal to p naught and that gives you this sort of ratio so you know that, that that's good and all right and then you move on to the next state maybe 
uh, mu1, right? So that's the second line. And you already know mu1, so you write it out, and then you say, well, what are the states from which I can transition uh, into 1? That's going to be 0, 1, and 2. And their probabilities are p0, r1, and q2, respectively. So that's the global balance equation for uh, state 1. Then you kind of simplify some stuff out, right? You know mu1, plug that in, keep the mu2. When you solve for mu2, you'll see you get this. And that takes a little bit of algebra that I kind of sketched out here. You know, you bring these two over to the other side, and that's this part. And then recognize that R1 is actually 1 minus uh, P1 minus Q1. And that's what happens here. And then there's a cancellation. P0 cancels this one. This guy cancels uh, that one. And then what's left is, thi what's left is this. So you get uh, this for mu2 times Q, Q2, and then you divide over the Q2. So, um, you know, it's not a horrible calculation, but it's also a little bit tedious. I'd suggest that if you actually started with local balance, which I think you kind of can do on, on your own, you'll get there much faster. The calculations will be similar, and you could again start with zero and uh, move on to one, and so on and so forth, and you'll start getting, you know, the same pattern. This one, then this one, and if you do mu2, you'll get a mu3 that, that's similar as well. Um, you know, I guess, you know, it's important. It doesn't always work. Like local balance doesn't always work. And we saw that th this renewal chain in the previous clip did not, you know, that was a fail. So it didn't work there. It, it's going to work here. You know, I, uh, you know, I did it using the global balance equations, but, you know, try to write it out. It's going to be very similar and you'll get, start getting the same answers. Another way to take a shortcut is once you, sometimes you can almost guess what the answer is. And, and from this pattern, you know, sometimes you can guess it just from the into from after you develop some intuition. Here, you know, I picked you know I picked up a mu one and a mu two, and so I can almost I'm ready to make a guess on the mu x. Right, it looks like it could be that. And this is from u x greater than zero with mu zero is equal to one. And so sometimes it, it pays to kind of take a guess and then just verify. Right, instead of trying to come up and solve equation, come up with equations and solve them. You just have, you know, whatever your guess is, and then you see, let's see if it satisfies uh, global balance, or let's see if it satisfies local balance. Local balance is going to be uh, your friend in this one, and, you know, how do we verify it? Well, first of all, I need a, a pair of states, and here there's no point uh, verifying it for all pairs, because like these pairs, there's no way to transition from, you know, from one to the other. I'm, on, I'm only going to pick adjacent neighbors. And so let's pick, say, um, y equals uh, x plus 1. And so I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to say y is equal to x plus 1. So I'm going to start with mu x, go to x plus 1. What is that? That's px. So this goes, this just becomes a px equal to my other one, my other state is x plus 1. And what's the transition from x plus 1 into x? That's q x plus 1. And now you can kind of quickly see that this formula is going to satisfy this for all x. Uh, you know, how do you see that? I mean, you tack on a p on that side, and then this one is going to have that p because it's x plus 1, but you're going to cancel out the q on the bottom, which this was missing. So, so you know, this is going to be true for all x, and you know, you could have kind of guessed this, maybe written out a few equations, guessed it, and then verified it, and then you'd be done. Uh, last final bit is, you know, what's our, you know, what's the global balance equation for any state? You could actually write this, and then you could see if you can verify that formula, which should also work. Um, if it satisfies local balance, it then definitely satisfies uh, global balance. Uh, ba -ba -ba. So let's. Uh, so what? So, so what do I do? Right, you have to write out which again, which states can I transition into y from, and that's going to be y minus one, and that's going to have a probability p y minus one. I can also do it from y with probability r y, right? And then the last one is going to be mu y plus one times q y plus 1, right? 
So, you know, we've isolated a state, and then we're kind of looking at all the neighbors, right? The one below moving up, and the one above moving down and staying at y. So this is a global balance equation for, uh, for the birth and death chain. And, you know, these are the equations that we actually started writing out here before, you know, making this guess. And this formula certainly satisfies them. You can verify that. But more simply, this formula satisfies the local balance equations. And, and that way, you know, you have your, you have the right uh, candidate there. So once you have the stationary distribution, this is, all, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, once you have the stationary measure, this mu so that satisfies global balance, you, you know, you have the stationary distribution right here, right? This is, a, this also satisfies um, global balance and um, it sums to one, making it a stationary distribution. Okay. Um, I guess one final note here. Uh, I should say I should talk about the you know again about this denominator here and whether that sum actually converges. And we saw in the renewal chain it didn't necessarily have to right. We had to impose an extra condition. Um, and same thing is going to be true here. First of all, there's no way to simplify this any further right. Those numbers just are you know we don't know what they are. Um, so the I'm not even writing it out because it's so kind of unruly. Um, you know, there could be some examples where you'll be able to simplify things and, and actually test for, for convergence of the sum, right? You know, you can kind of think of some uh, numbers, right? Maybe maybe px is equal to, you know, one half raised to the x power, right? And then you can test, you know, whether that, that uh, series would would converge here, and that would give you the existence of the stationary distribution and again we'll see in, in a future lecture that when this diverges um, that that's actually um, you're in a case where the stationary distribution just just doesn't exist and so there's no point of, of looking for one further um, okay so you know an important example and you know if you can do this one you can basically do them all <laughs>